Remember a time before Apex Legends and Warzone, where multiplayer shooters were less focused on faux military realism and more on arcadey swashbuckling? Splitgate remembers, taking a page from the Deathmatch book Halo and Unreal wrote and adding its own chapter with portals. There are moments of brilliance in its open beta thanks to being able to pop out of nowhere to score an unexpected kill, but you also have to deal with run-of-the-mill weapon selection, and the first few hours are a slog through some repetitive game modes. Splitgate is a rebrand and relaunch of Splitgate Arena Warfare, which launched on PC in 2019. It's now cross-platform on Xbox and PlayStation and free-to-play, leading to an influx of new content and new blood. So far, it's only selling cosmetics, so the playing field looks nice and level. Every match begins with a pair of starter weapons. For most match types, that's a slow-firing carbine and a fully automatic assault rifle, and an awesome portal launcher strapped to your wrists. It's all standard stuff like ballistic sniper rifles and shotguns, and even the sci-fi weapons like the plasma rifle and the railgun lack much flavor you haven't tasted in a hundred different shooters going back to Quake 3. That said, they're cliches for a reason. Most of these weapons feel distinct and useful, and it'll be easy to find a favorite among them. Triple kill. A favorite next to the portal launcher, of course, because it's hard not to fall in love with it immediately. If you've played Valve's Portal games, you have an idea how this works. Blue textured panels on walls, ceilings, and floors are scattered around every map, and that's where you can place one of your portal ends. When both gates are open, you can pass through, creating your own escape routes and ambushes. You can travel through allied and enemy portals as well, but you can't see through them, so you'll never know what kind of tactical advantage the enemy is gaining through their gateway, or if traveling through it is setting you up to get ambushed. Three. Portals offer great flexibility in any given mode. They can get you across large lengths of the map in an instant, or you can use them to set up flanks and give yourself new shooting vectors to attack oncomers through. Or you can use them defensively by dropping one end near the spawn point and the other near a forward position to use as a quick getaway when things get too spicy. A lot of folks are creative with them, and that element of surprise can make even the more mundane of Split Gates modes more exciting than the average shooter. A round of King of the Hill is way more dangerous when the enemy doesn't even need to be in the same room to clear it out. That's a blessing because you'll be stuck playing a truncated list of very basic game modes for the first couple hours of play. And even when the playlist opens up, you've seen many of these modes before, so Splitgate earns all of its kudos by applying its gimmick to existing shooter designs. To be fair, maps are pretty varied, both in physical layout and weapon arrangement. Arenas like the volcano side lava well and the beachfront oasis have great angles for long range weapons, whereas tighter spaces like the industrial impact are perfect for shotgunning through the competition. Not every map feels perfect for every mode though. Some of the larger maps can make games that involve chasing single targets like VIP or oddball feel way slower and longer than they do on more intimate maps. Of course, none of that matters if you can't actually play, because the servers are buckling under the load of people attempting to log in, which is why Splitgate recently pushed back its official launch date from July 27th to sometime this month. The open beta session has been a bit of a mess, both on consoles and Steam, with servers going down sporadically and sometimes for periods as long as several days. PS5 version has queue times upwards of 90 minutes, and despite that crushing demand, even when you are logged in, wait time between games can be sporadic. Sometimes you're queued up pretty quickly, other times you can sit for a few minutes before getting to play. One enemy remaining. 1047 Games is clearly aware of this issue and specifically delayed the official launch to address it, so we're holding off on a final review score until Splitgate officially comes out of beta later this month, but if we had to score it now, we'd give it a 7 for good. Check back soon after launch for the final verdict. For more on shooters, check out our hands-on preview of Back for Blood and our review of The Ascent, and for everything else, keep your sights set on IGN.